Yes, hello. Uh, good evening. My name is Mark van der Wallen. I'm a staff interpreter uh, for SCIC in the, in the Dutch booth. I worked, I started in uh, 1994. So I was a start, uh, st I've been a staff, a staff interpreter for uh, some 25 years. Uh, and a couple of years ago, I started uh, to work for the documentation uh, and uh, terminology uh, sector in, uh, in SCIC. And um, that's what I want to give a, a, a presentation about uh, this evening. Uh, when um, Monica asked me uh, to, to give a presentation for the IE conference about artificial intelligence, and she asked me to say something about the Interpreters Digital Toolbox, uh, the project which I've been working on for, for, for about a year and a half, <clears throat> I said, you know, wow, oh, well, actually what we're we doing, you know, <laughs> it's not that high tech um, <laughs> as, uh, as, as, as the, the, the title of this conference would, uh, would uh, lead you to think maybe, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's intended. But I mean, I think uh, Monica's introduction the, this evening as well gave uh, uh, the quote she gave uh, of Bertrand Russell, you know, that technology should be, should be at the service of, uh, human beings and not the other way around. Uh, uh, I think this is more uh, in line with the philosophy of the, of the, of the project because it's uh, intended to be a very practical uh, project. It's intended to be uh, a tool which uh, interpreters can use uh, in the booth uh, or actually several tools. It's, in, it's exactly intended to be a toolbox. Uh, uh, with with uh, several tools which uh, which interpreters can 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 use in the booth, and some of these tools are pretty low tech. I'll say a word about those as well, and some of them are more high tech. So we'll, uh, I'll share that uh, with you tonight. Uh, when we started working on this project, I mean, one of the problems interpreters complained about uh, in the booth was that in some meetings they received very many documents and that actually the meeting interface we have uh, uh, at SCIC uh, didn't really meet their requirements anymore. So uh, we started working on, on a new uh, uh, meeting uh, documentation interface, which is uh, uh, actually something, you know, pretty low tech, I don't know if you'd call it, but it offers new possibilities, which we didn't have before for sorting uh, the documents, for instance, I mean, the documents can have tags, I mean, agenda points, but also linguistic tags, I mean, documents in certain languages. Uh, and actually, with the first, uh, we started about uh, six months ago with the, with the development, it was uh, an internal development within uh, DGSCIC. Uh, within uh, the commission, sorry, uh, it was done together with, uh, with another commission director general for, for uh, Digit. Uh, they, they developed the, uh, the interface, which is now nearly ready. It's still in, uh, in well, it's been developed. It's still in, it's in acceptance phase. It still has to be tested. Uh, and actually we were presented the first uh, live uh, results uh, last week. Uh, so it offers new possibilities. For instance, uh, if you have a lot of, lot of documents, you can preview these documents. Uh, what will perhaps be of more, more interest to, to interpreters uh, working on the free market is that probably many of you know this, is that there are many uh, tools like this available uh, on the market as well. I mean, you, you, if you just look for documentation tools, uh, documentation apps on, on on a tablet on the internet. You will you will find lots of stuff. This is just a, a screenshot, uh, an, an example of these. Uh, and actually, we have uh, a colleague of ours, Alexander Drexel, who I saw it was uh, present is present tonight. Uh, made a very good movie, a little movie about this, which you can watch on the uh, Knowledge Center for Interpretation, which is a uh, a platform which uh, DGSCIC made uh, about two years ago, and uh, you need an EU login to get access, but everybody can create an, uh, an EU login. So uh, uh, you can you can you can watch that uh, little movie on the on the Knowledge Center for Interpretation. There's a community on uh, innovation for uh, for our uh, for our profession there. So you can you can you can watch that on the on the KCI. 
so that's let's say um, low tech. You know, for us it's, it's 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 very useful because of course the meeting documents are fundamental for for interpreters for preparing your meetings and for uh, during the meetings as well. Of course, there's the environmental aspect as well of, of using using less uh, paper. Uh, another, the, the second pillar, let's say, of the Interpreters Digital Toolbox project is uh, is terminology and terminology management. I'll start with the more low tech uh, things there, although the, I mean, like uh, Idliko just said, I mean, developments, well, let's say, over the past 10, 15 years have been very fast uh, there. This is something actually which has existed for 15 years or something, which uh, uh, ever since uh, um, in at least in the, European, in the European institutions, in the European Commission, translation services started to work with, with translation memories, uh, which they store in, in big databases. And these memories uh, have been available actually for, 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 for staff uh, for, for quite a long time, but we want to make this more, there have always been access problems for our freelance colleagues. We want to make this more easily available, so that, and of course, the big the big advantage of these tools is that you, if you look for up up a term, that you have context as well. Of course, there are uh, tools like this available on uh, on 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 the market for everybody uh, av available uh, as well. Another tool which we've been looking at, I mean, over the over the years, over the past 50 years, I mean, ever since the beginning of, uh, of, the, of, the, of, the, of the of the European community at, at, at the time. Um, interpreters working for DigiSkick have made glossaries. We've got a big uh, uh, database, um, which consists actually of, of over 1000 uh, glossaries. Uh, they're still used quite a lot, they're in Excel. At some point, I mean, yeah, in, in the past two years, we decided to migrate these to YATE because the YATE, the, inter the interinstitutional uh, uh, terminology database, which is the biggest data uh, terminology database in the world, actually, with over, which I'm sure everybody knows, over 2 million terms. Our own database has about 200,000 terms. We decided to integrate it uh, in YATE and to create as well a new interface uh, for interpreters so that we interpreters when they log in that they have uh, that they will get uh, an interface which is more interpreter friendly um, it'll have uh, languages in side by side view so that in in, in a nutshell uh, and uh, um, Idliko just spoke about the difference uh, between uh, uh, translators and 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 and, and uh, interpreters in this respect. And although I mean I think there are many more similarities than there are differences. I think it's certainly true that uh, interpreters uh, need in 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 one. Uh, uh, moment to be able to see uh, not only the language uh, you just heard and the translation into your own language, but also in your other language. So that I mean, when if if the term comes up in another language that you've already seen it. So this is let's say uh, uh, you know less. Um, Certainly, our terminology was, let's say, uh, more, more low tech. Uh, but uh, Yate itself actually has been completely overhauled with 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 with, uh, with new uh, e elastic uh, search uh, to, uh, technology, and uh, like I said, it offers uh, many uh, new possibilities for us for for the existing terminology and also to be able to 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 to, to query a much bigger uh, database. Um, two definitely more uh, high tech uh, aspects of uh, of uh, terminology. Wait, no, I have to go this way. Of uh, of YATE uh, of, of of terminology uh, tools are term recognition and term extraction, which I I, I want to say something about uh, in conclusion. Um, the, the term recognition uh, tool, it's actually, it's available for everybody, uh, uh, all interpreters, not only interpreters working for, for SCIC or for the European institutions. Again, you need, uh, if you want to use these tools, of course, YATE, anyone can, can access public YATE without 
uh, an EU login, but if you create an, e an EU login, you can you can use these uh, the term recognition module and uh, the term extraction module as well. Uh, you can upload uh, meeting documents in whatever format, uh, PDF, uh, PowerPoint, Word documents. And the idea of term recognition is that you get this as a result. If you upload a text, you get it back in, uh, in HTML in your browser. Because uh, because Yata as well, of course, you consult it in your in in, in your browser, uh, and anno it's annotated with the, the terms which uh, which are present in in Yate. and in the margin you can see uh, in several languages in 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 uh, this depends on on the user user preferences which you can define yourself in uh, for for your account. You can you can uh, see the information which is uh, in Yat if you use the term recognition module. We think it's a very interesting uh, um, meeting preparation tool, not for use in the booth, but for meeting preparation. Uh, another very interesting tool is the term extraction uh, module, uh, where it's like uh, the two sides of the same coin. I mean, term recognition works with. Uh, terms which are there in Yate. So basically the tool recognizes in your text, the text which you upload, the terms which are in Yate, whereas term extraction works in a different way. It extracts terms which are not in Yate and it's based, uh, I suppose you would call this big data or something, this technology. It's based on, on, on big language corpora, which have existed, which have been around for, for quite some time, actually. They're like, there's the, the corpus of the English language, which, which con consists of like, uh, I don't know, one or two million pages of, uh, of, uh, of uh, text in the English language. And for each word, the frequency, the normal frequency, of these words is known, and so the, the, these uh, these words are tagged in the corpus uh, with their with their their frequency. And what the term extractor does actually is that it compares the frequency in the text which you which you upload to to the Yata term extraction uh, module. It compares the frequency in your text with the frequency in normal use according to the corpus of the English language, uh, and the result. Which you get is, is an Excel file, which you which you which you receive uh, a glossary, basically you know with 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 terms based on the uh, and with some grammatical information like what you see here are nouns mostly, exclusively actually uh, from a, from from a text, just a basic text which uh, which I uploaded uh, earlier today. Um, so these are actually some of the main tools which we've uh, been working on. I forgot actually to include uh, in this um, in this presentation a tool which uh, which has been around for also about fifteen years uh, in Skik, which is called the Meeting Blog, which is like an information exchange uh, tool or, or a bit of a chat uh, based based on on the idea of a chat. I mean, which, which allows interpreters to exchange information on meetings so that different interpreters who will do the same meeting in a month's time, in six months time or next week can learn uh, from the interpreters who did the, the meeting today or last week. So that let's say some knowledge is trans, some very practical knowledge about, you know, articles or pages of a document discussed or expressions used, but also terminology. And we want actually to use the blog, the meeting blog, um, which we want to revamp as well as a sort of a bridge between uh, the, the, the new meeting interface and uh, uh, which, which allows, I mean, the blog interpreters during the meeting or after the meeting as well can note uh, terminology from, from the meeting documents or terminology terms uh, uh, used by delegates in the meeting. And they can they can they can export them. Then this is already possible actually to to the to the terminology team in Skik because we have uh, uh, our central uh, terminology team. We also have a, a network of interpreters called uh, Terminologica who exchange uh, uh, terminology. 
And uh, the idea is to then to, 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 to store the interesting terms uh, in and those terms which are not present in YATA already to export them, to upload them to, to YATA so that other language services, because that's basically the idea of, of YATA, can ben benefit from this uh, knowledge. Uh, so this is a very practical, I think, uh, approach to some low tech and some more high tech uh, tools, which 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 I think have proven their their value and uh, their worth. Uh, Skik is also uh, has also has a, a speech recognition project, which I don't know anything about. Um, but it's it's there. It's run by mostly by by our IT development uh, uh, unit, and of course we've been very active since the the beginning of the uh, of the COVID nineteen crisis in uh, on uh, with with, with uh, uh, interpretation delivery platforms. Uh, of course, uh, most many meetings we do. I mean, on some days, dozens of meetings. Uh, on on two mainly two platforms, uh, Interactio. Which we use for for simul for meetings in simultaneous, and mostly uh, WebEx for consecutive uh, meetings. Okay, this was a, a practical uh, contribution to this uh, discussion. And if there are any questions, of course. Thank you very much. <laughs>